Natalie Shirley, President and CEO here at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. I'm so glad you're joining us as we prepare for this year's Small Works Great Wonders Art Exhibition and Sale. This unique art sale features a fusion of traditional and contemporary paintings and sculptures. There is truly something special for everyone here. Now in this video, you'll learn more about Small Works Great Wonders, how to bid on artwork, hear from one of this year's artists, and take an exclusive behind the scenes peek at how it all comes together. The art in this sale is as amazing as Prita West. Indeed, some of the artists participate in both but this art is priced at a lower point because the size of the actual work is smaller. In addition, the museum invites a wider range of artists and artwork that is modern and contemporary, as well as some that is more traditional. The art is on display as of today, and I can tell you it is glorious. You can stop by any time the museum is open to see it at your leisure but there are also three other after-hours opportunities to view the art with perhaps a beverage of choice in your hand. November 10th and 12th will be preview nights. Those are free, but reservations are necessary as attendance is limited. And then we have the main event. We hope you can join us here at the museum on Friday, November the 13th for the sale itself. As before, there are limited reservations available a week in social distance. Please be sure to go to our website to secure your spot. If you're unable to join us in person this year, we certainly understand. We've created convenient ways for you to participate and bid. As always, you can bid via proxy by contacting Trent, the proxy man Riley. Now, you're gonna hear from our featured artist, Linda Tuma Robertson. I've always loved the West. Um, it's my family and I traveled there every summer. We visited the museums there. So I was especially thrilled to have the Cowboy Hall here in, in Oklahoma City. This year I decided that I wanted to do Oklahoma scenes. I was thinking, well, let's see. It's uh, a time where it's very festive because of the holidays and I love the season change to, to uh, autumn, so I selected a scene from uh, Danforth and uh, County Line Road out in far northwest Edmond. I, I loved it, it was beautiful, it was full of, of color in the fall, and uh, this corner, I kept going by that every day, and it had um, uh, a lot of sumac in the area and it had a little creek that ran through there and uh, it was just turning brilliant red and it was in the morning and there were yellows from the trees and the reds and so I took a lot of pictures of it. And then the other one is a scene from Highway 12 up in Green Country outside of Tulsa and it's where you come up on the Arkansas River Valley and you're looking out at it and you can see it. The, it's a big horizon and you can see it. And I did that in a 12 by 24 size so I could get that pan, panoramic look. And so those are my two paintings. Small Works Great Wonders was started in 2009 by Cynthia Post. She had a vision to create an art cell for everyone. This art cell would not have been possible without the vision and leadership of Cynthia. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2009. The Cynthia Post Award was created to recognize the bidder's choice of artwork. This year's winner of the Cynthia Post Award will be announced on Friday, November 13th. Stay tuned for the announcement on the museum's social media as well as here on our website. Remember, if you can't attend in person, we invite you to bid via proxy. We have so many great artists to bid on this year. Small Works Great Wonders is an important way to support over 100 of the nation's finest artists, as well as the museum. And we can't wait for you to join us one way or the other. And now we're gonna take you behind the scenes. Once the artists have done their part of the job by creating incredible artwork, 
they send it to the museum where it lands on our dock. And this is Sam, and he has the privilege of intaking all of the artwork. And we're gonna take it back to receiving. All right, so next, Derek is going to weigh and measure each one of these incoming, incoming boxes. Derek records all the information on one side. It has all the information about the crate. On the flip side, we'll put the information about the art that's in each one of these boxes and crates. Okay, let's see who we have here. Oh good, this is Linda Tuma Robertson, who you just heard from. So let's unpack her, her pieces. Now, because Linda is technically local, she's from Tulsa, she delivered her artwork this morning. So for each piece of art, we condition it. So once Derek opens this up, we're gonna take a look and make sure that the canvas is secure in the frame. We're gonna measure it. Um, we provide art tags so that the artist gives us all the information about their artwork. Now they've al already given it to me um, several months ago, so we double check to see that any information, if anything has changed, has the price changed, has the title changed, um, if there's an engraved title plate, is anything misspelled? Um, I unpacked a piece earlier where the artist had put the frame in upside down, and so the hardware, to, if we hang it, it's gonna be hanging upside down. <laughs> okay, very good. So all the, everything's tight and everything's good. Let's take a good look at the front. Okay, let's turn it around. What do you think? Linda Tuma Robertson. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a bin and let you start on our second piece. So often too, when an artwork comes in, it has to acclimate um, to our humidity. Sometimes the canvas is a little bit warped, but after a day or two, it kind of resets itself, uh, for lack of a better term. Yeah, so we'll wait to put the stretcher keys in, especially on the larger pieces when they come in and they are loose like that, we'll give them a few days to let them acclimate because we wouldn't want to use stretcher keys overstretch, causing problems at the, where the canvas is attached then once it does acclimate. So we give it a few days always before we kind of address the loose canvases. We mark each box with the artist's name, title, and that it is empty. And then we store all these. We have a special place uh, further down the museum where we keep all of our empty crates. All right. Yeah, let's put it on an easel. I'm gonna pull out a crate. This is one of our new artists. I'm anxious to see their artwork. This is Olga and Alexei Ivanov, and they're their first time. This is, I think, Tim Schinnebarger's. With these, this is a blown foam box, a lot of the sculptures, so we will mark these things for orientation for when we're packing them back later so that we'll remember how it is pieced together. When the artist um, creates a sculpture, um, they determine how many castings they're going to create. And this particular one, there will be 24, but this one is number seven in the series. And Tim, I believe, has offered a second casting for this particular show. The artist will tell us how many castings they're willing to sell in an individual show. So this museum rotate in and out a lot of exhibitions. And what happens, like right now, they are deinstalling the exhibitions that are in both the east and west hallways. Once the exhibitions are down, we have painters who come in and patch and paint but we also use temporary walls and we have to extend the hallway on the south wall in the east hallway. So we will also have to prep 40 feet of temporary wall for Small Works Great Wonders because with 220 plus works of art, it takes a lot of space. So once everything is painted and once we have all the artwork or at least the large majority of the artwork in-house, checked in, ready to rock, we start taking the artwork upstairs. And for this particular show, because it's a fast-paced show, it's really like people come in within an hour, 
they're bidding and we're pulling the bids and we're taking art off the wall because you get to take the artwork home with you that evening. So for ease and process, we hang it alphabetically. Proper lighting is extremely important. Robbie and Hal, who do the majority of the installation, as soon as the artwork's up, one of them is on a lift going up and down the hallway, adjusting the lights. I think one of the things this museum does well is we do our best to highlight every single individual piece of artwork uh, because we want it to be reflected appropriately in the museum, but we want to do our best by the artist, and I think that's what we do well. Wasn't it incredible to see just a glimpse of all the work that so many people put into creating Small Works Great Wonders? Thank you, Susan, and everyone involved for your tireless efforts. Small Works Great Wonders is made possible by generous supporters like yourself. Now, let's hear from longtime supporters of the museum, Jonathan and Natalie Fowler. Things different for everybody. That's that's one of my favorite things, and I think Natalie's favorite thing is about art. Is it's such a personal experience. Uh, you know, when when we started, it was really through artists that we knew. That was kind of how we picked our art. Was we had to have a personal relationship with the artist, and it was people in our local communities. Uh, as as that evolved, and we kind of started to collect a few pieces from them. You know, we, I think we both started to really appreciate the broader art world and really started to think about, well, what artists do we like outside of this uh, collective that we might know here in our local hometown? And then you start looking at the museums that, that you have access to and what artists are showcased there. And so, so much of, I think, both of our experiences throughout our childhood with art revolved around uh, Western art, you know, Southwestern Native American art. And when you come to the museum, I mean, that's that's a big part of what they offer. And I think that's something that our collection has really started to diversify into. I remember then 2019 when we were coming last year, um, we were also reflecting back. And now it's fun to include our children. Yeah, yeah. So we asked our daughter Winnie, who was five and a half at the time, um, you know, what are we missing from our art collection? <laughs> And she said, a unicorn. <laughs> so we came to the event. I said, I'm not sure if we'll have a unicorn painting this year, but I'll look. <laughs> and we'll definitely bid on it if there is one. Um, so we go to the event. I kind of forget about the cute unicorn story. We're having a good time. Yeah. Um, and we bid on and win a um, Harry Kelly Moyers piece of a horse. And it's just a beautiful, Southwestern landscape. Yeah. Um, and we brought it home, which is the best thing about Small Works Great Wonders when it's in person, um, is you get to take it home. But we brought it home, and the next morning when he woke up, and she said, Mom, you got me a unicorn painting. Because its little ear is kind of sticking up, and she truly thinks it's a unicorn painting. Yeah. We, we believe it's important to support Small Works Great Wonders in the same way that the Chuck Wagon Festival or the elementary school field trips that a lot of Oklahoma children take, that's their gateway into our history and art is their exposure to it. And when you look at Small Works Great Wonders, that's really how we get the young professionals set to be able to continue that story forward into the next generation and hopefully become lifelong collectors and storytellers. Thank you, Jonathan and Natalie, and thank you for your ongoing support of Small Works Great Wonders and the museum. And thank you to all our hardworking artists, staff, and terrific board of directors, and our donors who make this event possible. We would love to see you here at the museum for the sale on Friday, November the 13th. But if you can't make it, remember, you can always bid via proxy. Please visit our website for all the information on how to view and bid on this year's sale. We look forward to another successful Small Works Great Wonders art sale. Thank you.